All right, I'm here with uh, Bob from Hasim, and he's got some uh, pretty cool stuff that's on the table. What do you got? Yeah, yeah so our Hasim product, basically what it is, is it's a simulation trainer that helps the student and the instructors um, better define the learning environment. So instead of using uh, the old methodology where we put a post-it note on a door or we're yelling at a guy through a level A suit, the instructor actually has a tablet that he can change the readings. So what we have set up here is we have our four gas, um, and then we have a radiation system. So the only thing we're missing is pH paper, and basically what we have right here is the tools that we need to send people down range for that unknown. So let's say we got a leaking 306. As the guys are going down range, I can start bumping up the LELs until it alarms. So it's alarming for me on the screen, it's beeping and vibrating for the student with the handheld. As they add the correct actions, whether it's foam or they start backing up, I can change the readings and lower it, showing that they are doing the proper strategy and tactics. The other thing that's really cool about this system is I can change the meters. If I wanna change the meter package, I hit the drop down on my tablet, I go down and let's just say we'll go to uh, multi-gas with VOC. I select that, hit select meter, and now that's changed. One of the other cool things we can do is we have a question list. On the, on the instructor's tablet here, we have a bank of questions. So I'm gonna pick uh, chemical properties, hit select, select the question, question pops up, hit send, and now it pops up on the handheld in real time, and then the student pushes the button for the correct answer, and then on the instructor tablet, it shows that they did the correct, act, the correct answer or incorrect answer. Very cool. All right. Well, you can check out more about uh, Hasim and their meters. Uh, you can see it on the show notes page or contact them through uh, what we have written in the notes. So this is the FLIR Identifinder R200. This is a new instrument, was launched last October. This is an SPRD. What that means is it's a spectroscopic personal radiation detector. So what sets this system apart from some of the other systems that are out there is you have basic PRDs, which are detection only, personal radiation detector. All that's gonna do is it's gonna let you know if you're within the presence of a gamma isotope. However, whenever you're within the presence of that gamma isotope, especially at a large event, public event, you're gonna have to have a piece of equipment that will then take the next step and then identify that gamma isotope. This can do that, right? The further you can push down an identification capability into the hands of first responders, the better, right? Because ultimately, things can get escalated if you just detect, but you don't know what's going on. This is gonna give you a critical piece of information to let you know what's up. So SPRD, spectroscopic, identify those isotopes. It's going to identify and classify medical isotopes, industrial isotopes, special nuclear material, naturally occurring radioactive materials. It'll come up with an isotope identification result whenever that happens as well. Uh, system's extremely easy to use. You can use it as a pager as you want and just go into the basic count mode, which is what it's in right now, count per second. Now I can switch that out and then go back into dose rate mode. All right, that's my dose rate mode. So that's my background, that's pretty normal. Now, you know, speaking of the threat, let's talk about that. The threat is an RDD, radiological dispersal device, dirty bomb. We're trying to figure out a dirty bomb from, say, one of those medical patients that I mentioned earlier. So medical treatment, oftentimes, it'll be a, a Tech 99M, Iodine 131, Thallium, something like that. Medical right? places generally don't explode. That's, that's right, yeah, yeah. And medical patients, whenever somebody has one of these treatments, um, they will have a relatively high level of isotope coursing through them for a couple days. Medical isotopes are very short-lived in terms of half-lives, meaning that that stuff essentially dissipates, excretes from someone relatively quickly. Industrial isotopes, however, are much longer lived, and that's where there can be a security threat issue, right? So cobalt-60, half-life on that, I'll tell you right here, it's 5.27 years. Season 137, you're looking at about 30 years. If you have a hot enough source, within an RDD type of threat, radiological dispersal device, if that goes high order together with a high yield explosive, you can contaminate an area for a very, very long time. Now, you know, fortunately, we have a lot of good controls on those radiological materials. It is a low likelihood chance of occurring. However, it's extremely high consequence should that occur, right? We need to make sure that there's confidence within the public safety space by having tools like this. So in fact, You've taken the power of your identifinder and put it into a PRD. Yeah, we've taken a similar what, feature set. What have you lost 
so, in the identifying yeah, arena that's, in order to fit it into that's a That's a really good question. So whenever we talk about radiation, we're, we're talking about some different factors when, we come, when we're talking about detectors. Um, we talk about sensitivity, we talk about resolution, and there are a couple other things as well. Sensitivity-wise, the sensitivity of your instrument is directly related to the size of that instrument's crystal. So we have lo lower, smaller detector, a smaller detector in this instrument versus your identifier. So now, like with this, you may have to get a little closer than you would the identifier. Exactly. All things, get, all things being equal for the same size source, the same level of shielding, you'll have to get closer to it to okay. identify it, right? Um, or you would have to be close to that source for a longer duration of time, that time factor, or there would have to be less stuff shielding between you and your detector, all things being equal, right? Okay. So those are the three main factors, right? Now, the way that the gamma radiation stuff works is it's the inverse square law. So as I half the distance to my source, my count rate goes up an order of uh, four times, right? So there's an argument to be made that the more detectors you can get out there, the greater the chance that you're going to be able to pick up on a source as it's moving around. Yeah, so that's kind of how that works. Now, getting back to this a little bit, I got my isotope here. One of the really cool features about this instrument is it has an auto identification mode, right? That's gonna be very, very useful if you're a first responder, you're working a public safety mission, you're walking around a facility, right? And say there happens to be a medical patient, right? Who has got a Tech 99 M isotope coursing through them feature. So if I have it within its holster right there, and I have an isotope present, Again, extremely, extremely small source, so I'm gonna have it really close to the detector. You can see that the system went into the auto identification mode as it reached a th count threshold. So it's gonna give me a percentage countdown. Uh, once that reaches 100%, uh, it's gonna come back with that identification result, right? Uh, going through its process, and then, boom, cobalt 60, that's what that is. The reason I bring this up is because in the, in the event that you do have that medical patient in the course say you're the medical patient in the course of the conversation that we're having this you thing exactly without me having to say like hey you know what's going on i can look at the screen tech 99m be on your way i hope you get better right fantastic all right so we've just taken a look at the fleer's new pdr that has the ability to uh identify on the fly uh if you have any questions on this you can go to the fl uh fleer's flir's website and check them out thanks guys thank you yeah Hey, I'm here with Michael from STTS, and he's got some stuff he wants to bring out at the new show in Baltimore. Here we go. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Uh, listen, at STTS, we're a training agency is what we started out being. Um, but through doing trainings for different fire departments, they would ask us if a, one of our training props, our specific teaching tools, was available for them. And so we started having enough requests that we started making our training aids available to fire academies and chemical manufacturers. Uh, we're strictly highway transportation. So if it's about a cargo tank, uh, we build these specific training props so that they're fully functional and the firefighters, the hazmat technicians can see the inside workings. Uh, one of the things about the firefighter or even the adult learner is they learn better whenever they're able to flip the switch, pull the lever, stick their head inside and see the actions of see the reactions of their actions. So we really um, we really like teaching. We really like making it so that it's um, it's easily absorbed by the adult learner. I love it. This is some good stuff out here. This is uh, this is our our Do best trade show, and in that everyone here is focused on high, highway transportation. Oh, this is the whole mega kit, right? No, we well, yeah. This is this is the same. This is all right. Let's all right. All this right. is actually oh. not a mega. Uh, it's actually uh, a ground resistance tester that's that's manufactured by AEMC. Uh, they're an electronics uh, electrical uh, supply house. They primarily uh, service and sell equipment to the electrical industry, but they knew that the fire service had a uh, a grounding and bonding need, and so they developed a. Uh, a user-friendly, firefighter-friendly grounding and bonding kit. And what's nice about the kit is it's completely color-coded. Hook the blue wire up to the blue post, the red wire to the red post, the green wire to the green post. Push one button and it gives you your answer. Fireman-friendly. It's, it's fireman-friendly, even a truckie. You know? I love it. <laughs> so, uh, 
Uh, you know, he may have a 22-inch bicep, doesn't mean he has a big butt, a brain. So, uh, but this kit is uh, is available. It's it's really super simple. Uh, the industry NFPA has relaxed the um, the, the grounding uh, ohms of resistance that you're looking for, but this system will will, will meet that and, and and make it real easy to read. Thanks again, Mike. I appreciate it. No problem. Proud we'll to meet you. We'll see you out there. I'm here with Troy from Hal and Hardy, who's going to go over some spill uh, strips, not spill, strips, spill control, spill cleanup, control material. cleanup material. So yeah, guys, today I'm going to show you our spill tration materials. It's a, it's a new product to the market. Um, it's actually made from 100% recycled material, but the key attribute is it allows water to pass through while capturing hydrocarbons. Um, today it's just going to show you the comparisons to your traditional uh, spill cleanup materials, which is what we call in the industry melt-blown polypropylene. Um, here you have what's called oil only melt blown polypropylene. Here you have universal. Uh, the difference between it is obviously, hence the name, this only absorbs oils. This will absorb anything. Our materials, like I said earlier, are made to capture oils or hydrocarbons while allowing water to filter through. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you the demo here, especially if it's raining outside. Here's where our, our, uh, our product works the best. So here I'm just going to rain on your traditional materials. Um, as you'll see right now, on the white, you're kind of getting some water beating up on top. The gray, it's actually become fully saturated. Uh, with our material, you'll see it's going to become fully saturated just like uh, the traditional materials. Obviously, um, when an oil spill happens here, on your traditional materials, you'll see. Universal, there's no capacity left to absorb oils because it's become fully saturated with water. On the oil only, you'll see it start to beat up on top, and I'll let it kind of work there. Pour it a little bit more on ours because it's a little bit bigger, but that'll kind of show you. But obviously when an oil spill happens, it doesn't stop raining, right? So here's what you get. Start seeing the sheen, kind of running off the materials, building up there in the water. With our material, what you're gonna get here the water continually pass through right I put an indicator strip underneath there to kind of show you how it's all clean water coming out don't mind the little fiber there but other than that I can kind of do it on the white here to show you you can see that's fully saturated there yep good work so that's filtration materials, comparative to the uh, the stuff that's been around since 1970. So. And you had had a, a, another material, piece of material underneath this. That's this. correct. Yep. Can you drip some oil into the the uh, and show what you showed before? Yep, no problem. So I'll just get uh, get some water in there. I'm going to try to not get it. It's going to stick to plastic. That's the only, I mean, obviously the problem here, but you can see it floating on top. We we'll use our materials here. Just kind of set it there. You see it pick off the top here. Also great for wiping applications. So a tough thing about capturing hydrocarbons that are stuck to plastic is they don't want to come off. You don't need any solvents. Nothing, it com completely comes off, it's on there. I can wring this out, no oil's coming out. Go back to wiping again, so. All right, Troy, thank you very much. If you want to find out more information about uh, this product from Halen Hardy? Halen Hardy. Halen Hardy. Uh, go to the show notes, we'll have additional links and information. Troy, thank you very much. Thanks, guys, I'm That's a little okay. oily there, so. Hey, I'm here with Jim from uh, GasMet, and he's going to be showing a new type of FTIR. Go ahead, Jim. Right, so what we're offering here is a multi-component gas analyzer that can measure 25 gases simultaneously. So here we have the anal analyzer itself, the DX4040 is the model. The air is being drawn into the analyzer, and then after 20 seconds, we have update of up to 25 gases simultaneously are measured. These 25 gases can be changed or they can be drawn from 
a component list of up to 250 gases of organic or inorganic and they can be measured at sub ppm level tens and hundreds of a ppm level for the detection so the technology really has two functions it has the ability to what we would call quantify the known so in a in a situation where there's been a truck spill or you know what chemicals in the air you're going to the library and you're drawing that and you're including that in your application uh, li uh, application library and you're going out and measuring that in near real time as in every 20 seconds but the other power is that when you're being uh, drawn to a site where you don't know you're perhaps taking your uh, gas detector out it's all blank but you can smell there's something in the air there's something going on then you have the ability to identify unknown gases where we can draw on the NIST EPA library of 5,000 gases to be able to quantify, uh, identify what is in the air. Uh, so a very powerful tool for the hazmat people to respond to. Excellent. On that. Uh, all it requires at the start of the testing is a zero, typically done with the nitrogen. Uh, there's no other consumables. Consumables is an internal calibration done by a laser. Uh, we have a particulate filter that periodically would be re remo uh, removed or replaced. Uh, decontam can certainly be done by just drawing in fresh air, uh, clean air into the system at the, the conclusion of the day. So it's a low cost uh, uh, ownership of the uh, of the system. Awesome. That's very great. Uh, thanks a lot for taking a couple of minutes of the time, and uh, we'll see you out there, John. All right. Thanks. Cheers.